The House of God Church, founded and established by Mother Mary Magdalena Lewis Tate in 1903, is celebrating 100 years of holiness. Join us as we pay tribute to our founder. See how the legacy and vision of Mother Tate has built and maintained one of this nation's oldest and largest churches. How different church leaders throughout the years have added to the greatness of the church and how different factions of the church known as dominions finally come together for the first time under one roof and much more in the House of God 100th anniversary. We began the four-day celebration with a gala banquet. People came from all over the country. We need people that need banquet tickets on. Okay. Well, just come here. Yes, ma'am. Chief our church leadership and church elders had a chance to get together. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I, I may not know the rest, but I know this song. <laughs> <laughs> The banquet room was filled to capacity with members of the congregation, special guests, friends, family, you name it. It was quite a kickoff. We come from many places, but we're all Mother Tate's children. Amen? Amen. And I don't want you to talk about any stepchildren or adopted children either. Amen. We're all Mother Tate's children. Yeah, and some of our friends, praise God, have come along to witness it. Yes, Humphrey, that's right. So I want you to treat everybody as if they were your own, and for they are. You know, we sing the song. We're going to get on with this program. I'm talking now because after a while, we're going right, right, just like that, okay? We sing the song about when all of God's children get together. You remember that song? What a time, what a time, what a time. Well, we are together, and we are here to do what? Have a time. And I figured it like this. Now, I have all these people here sitting to my left and my right. I figured like this. If we're all talking about we're going to heaven, and we're going to be there together, we might as well learn how to do it down here. Amen? We had great live entertainment by music from the heart. Jesus can feel There is no hurt That he cannot heal All things work According to his purpose 
Elder Mary Ravenel is always an eloquent speaker. Four scores and seven years, 29 days, 22 hours, 59 minutes, and 60 seconds, our forefather, Mother Mary Magdalena Tate, brought forth on this continent a new enriched with the word of God, a new established religion, holiness. And now, we the people of the house of God, in order to form a more perfect union, do ordain and establish uh, with Mother Tate uh, this church upon these hallowed ground uh, 100 years later. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And we greet you tonight in that same joy and enthusiasm with which Mother Tate walked the streets of the various states of these United States. We greet you and we say, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word, for he never failed us yet. And he's not going to fail you, Dr. Elliot. Lives of great men, great men, Nelson Mandela, Colin Powell, Hank Aaron, lives of great men, Henry Dillard, lives of great men, lives of great men, Bishop Campbell, lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind us footprints in the sands of time. The vice mayor the of Nashville, Tennessee, set the message. tone for the night. You see, Jesus not only calls us to come to him, but he also calls us to go for him as his disciples. And as I was discussing the many changes going on in the world today, there's one change that I really just want to mention. This change is probably having the most profound effect on the Christian foundation today and needs most immediate attention. And that is the absence of our young people. The absence of our young people in church. Just look around the church. Where are our young Christians? They're the ones who really are caught up in these changing times. People of God, I believe that it is our responsibility as Christians to go out and save our youth. Did you know that God holds us responsible for the unbelievers that's around us? The Bible says you must warn them so that they may live. If you don't speak out to warn the wicked to stop their evil ways, they will die in their sin. But I will hold you responsible for their death. So people of the House of God Church Incorporated, as you forge into the next 100 years in this changing world, though your foundations are being constantly rocked by Satan's sword, remember God has called you into it. Just like he called Mother Tate in 1903. Just like he called Dr. Keith in 1931. Just like he called Dr. Jenkins in 1962, and just like he called Bishop Elliott in 1990, God has called you into it. So people of the House of God, Church Incorporated, Keith Dominion, put your hands in the hand of the Lord as you walk into the darkness. Give praise to him, the Father Almighty, for his plan and continue to live for his purpose forever. That's how you make it through the next 100 years and that's how you make it through tomorrow. May God bless you. 
May God grant you the peace and good fortune as you forge into the next 100 years. And may God grant you the glory to have this celebration a century later. Thank you very much. We had great fellowship amongst the congregation. We even had a fashion show. And of course, who can forget the infamous black feather headband. They might have crashed on Wall Street, but the Saints were looking good. <laughs> Reverend Caroline Nelson is wearing an original Versace. <laughs> People love the night. Beautiful. It has been a very moving experience to see the bishops, the elders, and the members come together because as we know, where there is unity, there is strength. As I sat there listening to all of the music and the wonderful speech and just fellowshipping with those who are sitting at the table with me, I said, my goodness, this is really something. So this banquet, this whole centennial celebration is going to be something to remember. The opening day that Friday was beautiful. It was old time day and everyone dressed in period clothes from Mother Tate's day in the early 1900s. The entrance of the church leaders was in grand style.
Chief Overseer Bishop James C. Elliott officially opened the celebration. Therefore, I, Bishop James C. Elliott, Chief Overseer, Stinger Bishop, Chief Moderator, and Apostle Elder, do hereby declare this centennial celebration officially opened to give praise to Almighty God for all his blessings. We commemorate the rich heritage of the house of God which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth without controversy incorporated Keith Dominion. Given on to the chief overseer of this church, the house of God, which is the Church of the Living God, Program Truth of our controversy, Keith Dominion. Give an honor to the Chief Overseer of the Lewis Dominion. The Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of truth. We give an honor to the, I believe we have, yes, the Jural Dominion. Amen, where Bishop Mark here represents. Amen. We give an honor to the biblical house of God. Let me, let me put it this way so you understand. We're here to honor all of Mother Tate's children. Yeah. Got news for you. There is no bigger child than a child of Mother Tate. We're all God's children in God's house. Yeah. We honor our chief overseer, Dr. Elliot First Lady, and to all the chief overseers of all the dominion. Well, the term overseer goes back to slavery. When African Americans came to this country, we had to have people to watch us in the fields. So you had a white overseer. This was the person that told you you could uh, move, you couldn't move, and what you did in the fields during the work time. And when our churches, Pentecostal holiness type churches, uh, holiness Pentecostal churches came into vogue, they needed someone to oversee. And they didn't have the education, as you would say, some other groups. So they used the term overseer. And it was used to keep the body together. Then you have the term elder, you have the term bishop. And as I mentioned, those terms are in the Bible and it tells you what the role of an elder should be. But in the Pentecostal realm, we look in terms, we look at an elder as a person who can have one church, he can have four or five, it can be several. But the elder would be over those churches. The pastor would be the one probably at the church. Or that pastor could also be known as an elder. It depends on how much time they put in God's word and how quickly they have been elevated within the church. The present age, my calling to fulfill, to, to serve. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. before you, I feel the pulse of each of every one of you. But most of all, I feel the pulse of our Padesia, gigantic hero, our mother, and our founder, Saint Mary Magdalena Tate. 
We had many speakers who helped explain the history of the church and its founding by Mother Tate. I am pleased to be in your presence, just to be a little tiny person, to be among all these great people. Many of you knew Mother Tate, and those that didn't, you have her spirit in your heart. Mother Tate received the call to preach, and it was in the late 1800s. So she went out and started forming little cells and little small groups. And these little small groups began to spread the word. Also in 1899, she founded a holiness movement, a holiness sanctified movement, which was unusual for an African-American woman in the Pentecostal persuasion. Here is a letter that came from Mother Tate. You say, what kind of services did she have? I want to leave this with you. June 6, 1928. This is an excerpt from a letter that she wrote. Mother Tate uh, was my daddy's mother, so therefore I'm her grandson. I lived in the house with my daddy all of my life, and uh, obviously much of the talk that he uh, did was about his background, his coming up, the influence that his mother had on him in his life and his brother. Uh, his brother, of course, was Bishop W.C. Lewis. That's the Keith you know of. She was married to, to Bishop W.C. Lewis. And uh, much of the bringing up that we had, uh, contacts with the church and the discipline, the faith, the doctrine, all of these things were rehearsed with us uh, by Bishop F. E. Lewis. He did not fail to keep me reminded of uh, my grandmother and the work that she had done in the church and much of what she uh, had hoped to accomplish. Please send me a donation at once to the number explained. I am sick and in need. Now, I am truly your chief overseer, the only and true founder of the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. I am definitely, expressly known to be the one through whom the Lord in these last days did choose to set up this above herein named church, beginning in Greenville, Alabama, then in many other places in Alabama, and from there to Paducah, Kentucky, also to Waycross, Georgia. The Lord preached through me 24 nights in succession when building up the work in Waycross, Georgia, without the aid of anyone but Jesus to help me and to set up the church in number of 24 members before anyone's arrived to assist me in the meeting. Well, number one, it was unheard of for an African-American woman to have founded a movement coming from the South, poorly educated, but she had the anointment of God on her, and that's what gave her the unction to go forward. You want to know about what kinds of services she had? This is the kind. So, while rejoicing over the 24th person having already received the blessed Holy Ghost, I lifted up my eyes and did with the arrival of one who was my helper at that time. So the meeting in Waycross continued on until about a hundred or more were filled with the wonderful blessing in Waycross. I'm talking about service. I'm talking to the elders to the ministers and to the preachers, to the evangelists. You want to know what she did? That's what she did. Thank God for Jesus. So the Spirit bade me continue. The meeting and souls continued to be saved until the number of the band was 260. These are her words. It was her vision that there would be an organization that would not be sensitive to gender as such in the various roles that the church. This was specifically very difficult during her time, the early 1900s, because people did not recognize women. And to be bold and to take her children and to talk to people and to travel, all of these things were not a part of our culture in the late 1800s and the early 1900s. So she was quite unique. I don't think that could be in a greater gathering and fellowship has taken place in this meeting. One reason I say that is because we see so many of Mother Tate's children. When I think of Mother Tate it's coming together. and I studied the history of Mother Tate, I see as it stated she was a world evangelist. 
She worked very sincere in her work. She caused many souls to be saved. As a matter of fact, the mother church of the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth, the mother church is in Greenville, Alabama, and where I'm a native of Alabama, and I was born about 45 miles from the mother church. We are the children of Mother Tate, and we are a grand church of true holiness. Well, I feel that she was phenomenal. I feel that it was something very phenomenal for her time, being uh, not only a female, but uh, being uh, a black female. She traveled and was called at one time the great Eastern evangelist that is recorded in our general decree and constitution of the church because of her travels uh, uh, in car and on boat. She had a sense of humor. You can tell by the little ballad that I uh, uh, sang with the people today. very much interested, but she always wanted a story, a true story, something that would relate to the gospel that she preached. And she would do that with a smile, and she would uh, teach the members to sing those songs. Articles of faith have been strategically placed throughout this celebration service to forever remind us of what we believe. Article number one, we believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, and that these three are one in the holy estate God of, power said that of the Godhead us make man, both male and female. In his image and likeness, he created them. He made them perfect, pure, and holy. That was an outline. Mother Tate left one as a woman preacher who was not accepted uh, in the ecclesiastical world. In other words, she didn't have authority, quote, as they would say, to interpret the, the scriptures. And she set forth these articles to show her interpretation of what God meant as he uh, outlined these things. And so they were uh, captured in her decree book. 
Uh, she wrote the church's founding document, which is uh, the General Decree Book. All of the dominions still Jerusalem adhere to that. Of one man, many were made sinners. And we believe the old that Jesus is the foundation of the church. And that such a foundation was finished. When he said on the cross, it is finished. We preach and do firmly believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God and that he was born of the Virgin Mary. According to the word now, a number of people have asked me, uh, how did Mother Tate defend her position? She had full Bible proof. And that proof was uh, a number of scriptures in which the Lord uh, spake words that she certainly taught and she uh, went on to say that there would come a day that um, a woman would compass a man. You find that in Jeremiah 21st chapter. And uh, she said the woman would, and she dwelt on that very, very heavily, that that day was now. And that she certainly, not just because she could preach the gospel, but because she lived that gospel. The term bishop is not a term that we really came up with. It was used in the Catholic churches and other churches, but we pattern after the other churches because of the ring, the dress, the attitude, the dignity involved in using the term bishop. Working with Bishop Massey down through the years, I really admire her, her eagerness and her efforts as a state bishop at her age, 106 years old, and I really and admire what Bishop she, Massey is doing. I thank God for sparing me to be here in the number one more time. I thank him because he brought me over the rough, and the p people used to say, the rough side of the mountains. And I feel like moving on. Sometimes the way it looks kind of dreary, and the devil tell you, you can't do that. But one thing I learned that we can do anything that God told us to do. Amen. He don't tell us to do anything we can't do. And he knows what we can do. And I just thank the Lord because right now I don't feel no waste time. I come to God is you get tired now because the prize is at the end. And not given to the strong and neither to the swift, but the ones that hold out and then do to the end. Church, my mind is made up. And my heart is fixed. You do what the Lord said to you. Amen. He ain't gonna tell us to do nothing. It's a special moment for us as the Campbell brothers and as musicians in the House of God Church. We count ourselves as the third generation of musicians playing in what has been dubbed as sacred steel. We have been blessed to be able to travel throughout the world to over 20 countries playing House of God music for the world. And indeed, we owe that, we owe that all of that to, first of all, the House of God Church, and then secondly, to this next man who is on the program, who started this tradition back in the 1930s and began playing a lap steel in the tradition of the human voice and the voices of our Pentecostal services, and we refer to them as Mr. Willie Eason. 
and his brother Truman were two men in the house of God that brought in the Hawaiian steel laptop. It was very unusual. I knew right off that very unusual to find this music in African American churches. But also the music was just exceptional. Exceptional. You know, it was very expressive and uh, myself and my colleagues reacted, you know, on a visceral level immediately, and we knew this was really good stuff. And then we, right away, we heard things about the tradition goes back to the 1930s. It seemed like the critics all over the press and everywhere else just loved this music. They had never heard anything like it. You know, we got fantastic reviews. It's, it's the music that was just hidden, I guess, in the, in the church, in, in the house of God, you know, and I think this is what kept it so pure, is that people have kept it in this tight community that uh, has really its own rules and its own very distinctive music. By noon, we had our family reunion and barbecue at Tate Manor, which is part of the church complex campus located on Hyman Street.
think it was a, quite a pleasant uh, picnic, and we, I enjoyed it myself, and I believe others did. And nevertheless, uh, I can't say for everybody else, but I know things went very well, I thought. Mother Tate did die in December 1930. The church, after the death of uh, Bishop Tate, elected three chief overseers. There was three dominion, the Keith dominion, Jural dominion, and Lewis dominion. I always say it was broken up into the three dominions in 1931. Yes, it was by court order. And the three dominions are as follows. The Lewis Dominion, named for her son. The Keith Dominion, Mother Keith married um, Bishop Tate's son. He passed away before Mother Tate died. Therefore, uh, Mother Keith remarried. And the church took the name Keith Dominion after her second husband, who was also deceased. The McLeod Dominion, because this gentleman had worked faithfully with the church and it was proven that he had helped, uh, as they say, begin churches for this organization. With the McLeod Dominion, the church lasted under his name until 1937 when he passed. His wife uh, remarried and she married a Jewel. The last name was Jewel. So the church name changed to the Jewel Dominion. And of course, each of the three dominions are based on the house of God, but each has a difference in their name. Uh, purchased with his own blood was the McLeod Dominion. With the Lewis Dominion, they cut off without controversy. The Keith Dominion kept the full name of the church. The graveside memorial service for Mother Tate was held that afternoon. Again, we had a joining together of different dominions to pay tribute to our founder. This centennial that stands out above any other because there is no precedence. We are now began our service thinking and honoring our overseer for such an arrangement and occasion that we will conclude this centennial celebration in this way by the graveside. As we sang this opening song. When we all get to heaven, get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing there will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout Victory. May we note the hymn for this following memorial service here on this afternoon. I love thy church, O Lord. I love thy church, O Lord, the house of honorable, the church our blessed Redeemer saved with his own precious blood. We thank you, thank you for feeling the Holy Ghost. Yes, I want to ask. We thank you, thank you, oh God, for your saving power. We thank you, dear God, for your healing power. We thank you, God, thank you for the church, its faith and its doctrine. Oh God, holy hallelujah. We thank you today, and we celebrate what God has done through our mother. Thank you, Master. Mother Mary. Yes. Magdalena Tate, yes, a woman of God that reflected the power of God yes. and the majesty of God in a time when it didn't seem like it could be done oh, yeah. by a person of her stature. Oh, yeah. And she rose to the mm. occasion, yes. and God, God has been Jesus. glorified, mm. and the work is not yet completed. Yes. Right. And we thank God. Yes. Let us not forget yes. to remember yes. what God has started. Yes. He shall also complete. All right. We give praises and honor to God for Mother, for Mother Tate yeah, yeah. and the work that has been, been begun and continues through her efforts. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you. So today, we do not say goodbye. Oh. We say 
Come on, brother. Hey, hallelujah. Holy. I ain't come. To a memory and to a future of carrying on the work that our founder compassionately began. We shall see you. Hallelujah. We'll see you. Yes, we will. Hey! Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. By virtue of our anointing, our position, our office of this church, House of God, keep dominion. And I do believe that our voice descendants of all of the chief overseers hey, yes, and Lord. all of the visiting yes, bishops yes, when we say we lay the wreath yes. on mother's grave yes. and a part of his faith and doctrine yes. when we say we lay it in the name of God the Father, yes. God the Son, yes. and God. God the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Oh. We don't have to go back. No more. Oh, we belong to the church of the living God. Going around with the truth. We don't have to go back. No more. We don't have to go back. No more. We don't have to go back. No more. We belong to the God. This historic celebration is the first event where all of the Dominions came together for a spiritual occasion. With the Keith Dominion was uh, Mother Keith. I, I knew Bishop Keith. I, I did not uh, serve under her too long, but I did serve under her because she ordained me as an ordained minister. And uh, the years that I had been here, so I just came into church about 52 years ago. When I got here, I found that Bishop Keith was a real woman of God. She was one you did not play with. She was one that was serious at all times. Well, Bishop Keith uh, was a meek and the most spiritual-minded person, and there's many things that I can name that happened under her ministry, especially her faith and her gift in God because many souls had been healed under her ministry. Let me see the first time that I met Bishop Keith. She came to West Virginia to one of our assemblies. Her main interest, Bishop Keith's main interest was to help young boys and girls and to see that they were taken care of and receive some education. People will send their children to Bishop Keith, to the Key Bible School, and to the uh, home. And after that, I uh, went to her school, you know, when she had the school library. I went to the school, I was the matron now, and I went to school for one year. But I was, I was down there for three years. And that's where I become to really be a person there acquainted with Bishop Keith. She told me I was the best friend she'd had since Mother Tate passed. And we were just good friends. After Mother Keith, uh, there was Brother Jenkins. Now, Dr. Jenkins, I drove him around for 13 years. I knew him more than I knew any of them uh, because we traveled together, and he was a man of uh, almost spirit. His responsible handling of church finance and visionary striving seemed to open the hearts of others. Land and buildings were given to the organization on the local and general level. He did not leave us empty. 
He never forgot the church and his life. And I did have an opportunity to sp speak with him during his lifetime. And then after that, we came with uh, Bishop Elliot, James C. Elliot. Now, Bishop Elliot, our present chief overseer, we have preached together, we have ran revival meeting together, and uh, we have traveled. I lived in his home with his family, and uh, also I even cooked in his, in his home when they was working. And uh, when they came home, the dinner would be ready because I was not working. I was just staying there with them. And I nursed, my wife and I nursed his uh, youngest son. And so we, we, uh, we, we have a good uh, relationship, Bishop Elliot and my family and I. And all, these are the four people through the Keefe Dominion. Now, through the Lewis Dominion, since her son took over F.E. Lewis, I believe I'm right on that. After that, his wife, Helen Lewis, took over. That was the second, uh, well, first, Mother Tate. Second was her son, he died in 1968. Third was Mother Helen, and she passed a year or so ago. And presently, it's Maher Lewis. So those are the generations, the four leaders within the Lewis Dominion. Now, if we come over to the McLeod Dominion. It was started McLeod until 1937 when he passed. After he passed, his wife remarried and she married a jewel. So the Dominion became Jewel Dominion and she lived until 1991. Now after Mother Jewel passed, it went to Naomi Manning. Naomi Manning was uh, related to the Harrises and the Harrises were tied into the Jewel Dominion. And so the Harrises were out of Florida too, by the way, I think it was Ocala. And so Naomi was their only child and she became the leader of that Dominion. <laughs> this Mother Tate family have come together again. The Jules family, here again. The Keith family, here again. The Lewis family, here again. The White family, here again. The Biblical House of God family, here again. We have come together. Now that we are together, let's take the time to remember the doctrine Mother Tate taught us. Let's take the time to remind each new generation, we are family, 100 years in the making. Let's take the time to restore our kinship in this one body, the house of God which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. We had great performances to mark the celebration. The Beard Sisters are always a perennial favorite. I want to be ready, yes I do. I want to be ready. I want to be ready to walk in Jerusalem just like John.
the children of the Israelites Walking in Jerusalem just like that the National Deacons Union, thank God for this little space to be a part of this great 100 years of holiness celebration. I call your attention to Acts, the sixth chapter. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a mumbling of the Grecians against the Hebrews. And then the twelve called a multitude of disciples and said unto them, Wherefore, brethren, look out ye among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost, whom we may appoint over this business, duties of the deacons, deaconess Ruthie Rump. The duty of a deacon is to serve tables and to work in every way possible, for the support and outbuilding of the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. To defend, uphold, maintain, and obey the faith, the constitution and the government and the creed 
and the general rules of the Church of the Living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. The Henderson Sisters are the premier vocal group of the Jewel Dominion. The Centennial Parade was the first event Saturday morning. This is a grand day. I don't find adjectives to describe my feelings, but I know that the Lord is pleased. And what a fantastic gathering. And to have this parade this morning seemingly is putting a seal on some of this activity. Oh, it's exciting. It's a big, uh, like a big family reunion. You get to meet more people and you really get to meet people you don't see in the national convention because they're here, you know, for the weekend for this event and I'm excited about it. Really happy to know everyone. It feels great to be the main thing is that I believe now that she was miraculously healed and it gave me courage in my own life experiences to, to have the faith and the courage in God more deeply. And the fact that in uh, 1903 women didn't have the right to vote in America, it was not in vogue for women to speak publicly. And I learned from her courage and it has given me courage to uh, speak out on, on issues and to, to get more people out to register and to vote and to get women more involved, not from a sense of uh, women's live, but from a sense of God is for everybody and with them there is no respect to per respect a person. It was huge and we had dozens and dozens of participants. We had a marching band, floats, we had everything. You had to be there. It was a grand day. Everyone had a memorable time.
it was great seeing the community come out and support us. Saturday night was filled with great music, great speakers, and words of inspiration.
my heart was hot within me. And while I was musing, while I meditated, while I contemplated, while I gave thought about what was going around, the fire did burn. And we thank God. And every time I think, it causes me to thank. And every time I think, it causes me to thank. And when I think about him, it causes me to thank him. And when I thank him, I think about him again. And I thank him again. And I thank God for this history being made. A landmark has been made in the church that God designed. A landmark has been made. When you look around and see Jewel Dominion, Lewis Dominion, Keith Dominion, all smiling, all loving, all worshiping, all offering up praise to God. This is a landmark. Glory to his name. me just a little while. I didn't even know why the Lord kept working with me the way he did even before I came here. But he took me all of the way out of the Bible, backward through Genesis, over into eternity. And he began to show me the church. God ordained the church before anybody got here. It's Amen. God set everything in order in the church before we got here. 
God had a plan for the church. You pray for me because I have a lot of manuscripts and this is not on any of it. But it's something the Lord wants to say. When I heard my brothers began to speak, what would Mother Tate say if she was here tonight? I began to hear somebody to say, will we ever get back together? Will you allow me to say this, that I'm not out of my mind? But if you stay in tune with God, God will talk to you. Right. Hallelujah. And the Lord God said to me when I was real quiet over here and my brother didn't understand why I wasn't in the dancing mood, I was talking to the Lord. And the Lord said to me, you came out of a large family. Five girls and three boys. And he said, you know good and well as the sun began to go down and darkness began to cover the land, your parents would go and call you in. Wake up, are you with me? The Lord said to me, Mother Tate is not dead. She is not dead, she is just away. And I began to think about what she said in the decree book, page 33. Please bear along with me, please. She said, we believe the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth, is awaiting and preparing bride. Chief Overseer, that's what's going on right now. God is preparing the church. She's got to be made glorious. But the Lord said, until you all get out of the way, God can't do it. Sunday was the last service, and the Sunday service summed up the whole experience. Dr. Carolyn Love spoke of our Sunday school tradition and our rich history of Sunday school literature publication. I need to worry about what your church is doing. I need to worry about the greater force. When we understand that Bible school training is what all churches must come back to do, then we'll understand that your church is not my church's competition. Walmart is my church's competition. The flea market is my church's competition. The movies is anybody we're taking our tithe and offering, our time, our attention, our allegiance, our support to, that's the church's competition. But when we bring them back to spiritual home training, bring the body back, sit them down, open up the word of God and say, the scripture says, touch your neighbor, say, we got to get back to what the scripture says. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. The scripture, the scripture, the scripture deals with life issues. The scripture deals with everything that's going on today. I, I began to share when I was in ministering in Alabama on yesterday. And I began to share with the body. I said, folk think that this my baby daddy stuff just started yesterday. But I dare you to pick up your Bible and go to the book of Genesis. Jerry Springer didn't start the my baby daddy drama. It started way back in the Bible days. Why we have to get back in the school of the word and Sunday Bible studies because there is nothing new up under the sun. Ecclesiastes tells us that. And when we understand that, Sarah, Abraham, and the handmaid, Hagar, they had some baby daddy issues.
Sunday Bible school offers a growth plan. It offers a place for foundational training. We'll stop running after every wind in doctrine, every new thing, every huff, every hoop, and every jerk. It's already in the book. My, 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 my. Oh, it's touch your neighbor, say it's in the book. It's been there thousands of years. We just got to get back to the basics. Ah, Jesus. In the school of spiritual home training, it's a place where a person can go through the sorting out process so that we can begin to take a godly perspective on the decisions and the choices we need to make in everyday life. When we begin to set our priority, say, I don't care what else program we have to cut, we cannot afford to cut Sunday Bibles. But today we say we can't afford to do that. Because if we lose our first focus and vision and don't make this a priority, the, the, the vision that Mother Tate saw in her heart and began to institute, if we lose Sunday Bible school, the vision will get watered down. The focus will no longer be clear. And folk will start doing just what they want to do and how they want to do it. When you have the school, the Sunday Bible school, that place of spiritual home training, you can set some things in order. Some things can be said in Sunday Bible school that you can't say in the regular service. See, in the regular service, you can't raise your hand and say, could you back up? I need to ask a question. We got to get back to the focus of training, discipline, order, structure. See, structure. Structure. Bishop Elliott, on behalf of Bishop Felix E. Lewis, presiding bishop of Washington, D.C. and Virginia, we would like to present this letter to you for the House of God Church and its 100th year celebration from the President of the United States and my Commander-in-Chief. George W. Bush, and I'd like to read it to you, Bishop. The White House, Washington, D.C., September 10, 2003. I send greetings to the members of the House of God Church as you celebrate your 100th anniversary. Faith plays an important role in the lives of many Americans, offering strength and guidance for the challenges of each new day. By encouraging the celebration of faith and sharing the message of God's love and boundless mercy, churches like yours put hope in people's hearts and a sense of purpose in their lives. This milestone provides an opportunity to reflect on your years of service and to rejoice in God's faithfulness to your congregation. In the days ahead, may your community continue to grow in faith and friendship. Laura joins me in sending our best wishes for a memorable celebration. President George W. Bush. And Bishop, I salute you.
Praise God for the celebration for these 100 years. Call me shot. Yeah! Thank you, Jesus. Services were more than I could really try to describe. But supernaturally, spiritually alive. The Lord was moving in a great way, and everything went according to our plans. And I was just grateful and more than anything religiously excited. And we are grateful for this 100 years centennial celebration. The message was at its best. If this is a celebration, say yes! Yeah! The centennial celebration of the House of God Church touched a lot of people. Personally, I think it's a wonderful gathering. I mean, uh, 100 years of existence, that's a momentous, uh, you know, fair there in itself. I think it's great. You know, when all God people get together, we're having a wonderful time here in the millennium. I think it's a great thing. I think it's a blessing that the Lord has bestowed upon us once in a lifetime that we can experience such of this magnitude. The 100th year anniversary for Mother Tate is outstanding. I just can't express enough how important it is for today and how important it should be for the future. Not only should we have this activity now, we need to have additional meetings later where we can look at the future needs of the church. You may have already done that. And from those future needs, we can see where we're going to be 50 years from now and another 100 years from now. I see the people can come together, all of God's people, such as the Mother Tate family. And that's a highlight in my life because uh, many of them I have not known, just heard or either read about them, but those that I knew and those that I did not know, I'm so happy to see us come together as brotherly love. Oh, it's a historic, it's very historic and it's so wonderful that uh, we have come through 100 years of church history. It's beautiful. I think it's a wonderful experience, and we've been having a glorious time, and I think this is a history-making history -making event. I think that uh, I'm just proud to be a part of an organization that uh, has been tried and tested by time, and uh, it's not fly by night by any means. and. We're just enamored by, you know, all the fellowship, the love, and uh, all the bishops, the chief overseer on down. Everyone is just a fellowship that, that you can feel and you can see. Uh, I mean, it, and it filters down to, to even us, the little folks. <laughs> I feel that it was just a good experience for all of us to share our 100 year celebration of our church. I learned so much more than um, much more than some of the things that I have, haven't heard, I heard them here today. And I enjoy myself so much. And everything's been so uplifting since we've been here and just so touching. And I was so pleased and happy that God bless me and allowed me to be able to come. I think it was nice, very enjoyable. I think it was wonderful. I liked the parade yesterday. I was in it. But um, I think it was wonderful. It's nice, it, you know, just to see everybody that's in the house of God, to know, you know what I'm saying, how like we all can come together in, in love and in unity and have church like we are now. Well, it was great and I must say that it was 
much greater than what I could have ever imagined it to be. I think each of the bishops uh, expressed himself in a very profound way, and um, each one of their words was quite weighty, uh, displayed quite a, a degree of friendship and fellowship among people. Everything was very, a very friendly atmosphere. Uh, the hospitality was superb. As I said earlier, we are still all mother's children. There is no getting around it. No one can undo that part of history. No one. I think, I think it's one of the greatest things I think that have happened because any time there is a division, a separation, there should be a time for us to get back together here on earth because uh, we must be able to fellowship here if we're going to fellowship in God's kingdom. And so uh, I think it's a great event. What you're hearing now and I'm hearing is, is something that I have been hammering at the various, and I'm glad to see them doing that, and that is we must reunite. We must come together. I don't think it will ever be like it was at one time, but in whatever fashion and whatever way uh, that we can, that we will come back together as a united church. I heard Mother Tate was a very bright, intelligent Christian woman. She was a leader of mankind. To me it's a recognition that uh, one of the unsung heroes of uh, the 20th century is becoming recognized for all the things in which she have done. I think the legacy of Mother Tate is a very uh, special legacy and it's one that we should be able to appreciate because when you think of women during that particular era of time coming into a ministry where it was not a woman's world, then we have to look back on Mother Tate as someone that God has truly anointed and brought forward to do this work of God. And her work is still being carried on after 100 years. Well, I'm saying to the future generation, I know that I will not be here another 100 years, but I would like to leave to those that will come after me. We have tried to lay upon the foundation that was started by Mother Tate. We are yet building, and it is my hope that future unborn generations will adhere to these patterns.